What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Old Volks TV. We are working on the bus again, hopefully for the last time <laughs> for a while. Uh, we got the motor all put together. You know, we've been following along with that. We got this new 1835. We took that 1600 single port out and changed this bigger motor, custom built. Um, we put a bunch of fancy stuff on there. Uh, we just got the MST serpentine kit, which we put on there just the other day. Uh, just to make this thing bulletproof. I want a no trouble motor. Uh, we still have a little bit of work to do. I wanna get this thing in today. We only have like two weeks left before the Big Ben trip and I have to go on that trip. I've been looking forward to it since last year. So a few things we gotta get done. Uh, the fuel system, because we have a Mexican EFI case with no fuel pump provisions, we gotta run an electric pump. Um, which is, you know, it, it can be easy or it can be kind of a pain. Like I did it the kind of a pain way, but it's the right way. I rigged up a harness, I put a relay in there, got that all set up. I got a bracket from Mario over at the dub shop that mounts it to the, the frame, you know, the transmission cradle. Uh, it kind of hangs in there and then and gets in there nice and tight. So it's easy to access on the trail if I need to. Just get in there behind the wheel and, and pull one little bolt off and you know, you got the thing down, we can swap it out. It's got the pre-filter on it. Um, I ran some new lines yesterday. The tank was full of gas because I literally filled it up to the tippity top for that trip and we didn't make it. So I had to empty all the gas out into a gas can. Oh, what a nightmare. But we're good now. So I'm gonna get this fuel pump in. Um, I already rigged up the harness and did all the wiring. We've got a fuel pressure regulator because that pump puts out anywhere from four to seven PSI. That's the lowest uh, pressure pump I could find. But these caddies like 1.5 to two PSI. So we have to use this uh, fuel pressure regulator in line after the pump to bring that pressure down. I should be regulating it after the second carb. These carbs don't have a way out for the gas yet. So I'm, I've got to figure that out and then we'll probably have to redo the system. But for now, uh, the guys over at Caddyshack said, yeah, it's no sweat. Just regulate the pump coming in. That's all they do. They just deadhead it and it should be good. So get this in there, get everything plumbed up and nice. So then when we drop the motor in, all we got to do is hook that little rubber line up to this stainless line and we're done. Motor's in, motor's in good shape there. Uh, we also <coughs> cleaned up the engine bay. We painted the engine bay a little bit, just did some touch up work on it. We cleaned up the wiring put some abrasive resistant uh, coating, like a little sleeve over all the wires in there. It makes it look really nice, but also protects the wires from the heat and the oil and all that stuff. Uh, you know, we don't want anything happening behind the motor if we can get away from it. Uh, so you can see the relay up against the wall over there. And then uh, we've got the harness on the back of the motor, plug it right in, good to go. We also have to put in this oil cooler. <laughs> Uh, I made the brackets yesterday out of aluminum. They're okay. Um, they'll do the job. They're not pretty like uh, Jason over at JW Classic VW. Um, check out his YouTube. I'll throw a link down below. He made like this beautiful bracket that goes up on the torsion bar tube and it's, it's shiny black and it's, man, it's badass. But I don't have time or materials for that. Uh, this will be just fine. Nobody's ever going to see it after this video. So, you know, what are we going to do? And It'll work just fine. It's going to bolt into the floor and it's going to bolt into the frame. It's going to hold it just up in the right spot next to the transmission so it gets plenty of flow. Fan will be protected. The oil lines will be nice and short. So, you know, we'll be in good shape there. So we got a lot to do today. We're burning daylight. Let's get to work. All right, so here I am being the motor <laughs> uh, we're gonna mount this bracket uh it's pretty easy actually it's it's very well designed uh to fit exactly where you want it to go uh, the hardest part is actually reaching these little nuts when you put it on uh, but that's okay we'll figure that out Take this little back piece off here and I'll show you how it sits on there. Oop. 
See, you always lose the little screw. All right, so this little guy, it's got that little tab that hooks on the top of the frame there, which is exactly what you want, because that's gonna hold it. And then this little back piece, that'll go right there, and that'll hold that fuel pump right perfect in the right spot at the right angle, you know, right where it needs to be. So we'll go ahead and zoom in here quick and get that little guy mounted. There it is. It's mounted in a nice visible spot where everybody could see it. Uh, so we'll be able to get those measurements, you know, make sure the pressure is in the right range. Uh, we can adjust it by turning that screw on the top and locking the lock nut. Uh, it goes through that ugly hole that I'm gonna have to figure out how to make look pretty. And then it comes out and it makes this little half a loop and hits the pump right there. It's perfect. Uh, you want to make sure that that is not kinked, but you also want to make sure that that is not uh, touching anything. You don't want it rubbing on anything. That's, uh, you know, it's in good shape. I, I got a little bit of slack in there, like I said, just so I can pull that pump down if I need to uh, replace it. I don't want it to be so tight I can't move it. Uh, so that should be good. Everything's nice and tight. All my AN fittings are tightened up. Uh, those won't leak. That's a uh, Army Navy. That's what the AN stands for. They came up with that design to keep their stuff from leaking and they could take it on and off as often as they needed to uh, without causing any damage to it. So we'll get this little guy trimmed up uh, when the motor goes in. But that's it for fuel. Uh, now we can go start messing with that oil, which is going to go right down there in that little, just below the torsion tube. Uh, I got a I got to mount it in there, but we'll show you that in just a second. We'll climb underneath there and, and we'll get to work on the oil. And then uh, I think then we're ready to stab this motor. I got the oil cooler in. I got the oil lines in. I got the fittings done. Uh, it was just a little too tight in there to uh, try and get the camera in there and, and try to get you guys a good view. So I'm just going to show you what I did and we'll just pretend like you saw me do it. <laughs> uh, so... Starting in the engine bay area. Uh, these are the quick disconnects that we put in there. So when we go to pull the motor, uh, it's easy to, well, I say that. Uh, it's easy to get it out without having to disconnect all the lines. Uh, these are industrial, like off a tractor or something. Uh, so they'll hold the pressure just fine. It's not that much pressure in the temperature. Uh, but the nice thing about these is that when you pop them, they seal. So you're not going to lose any oil. It's not going to make a big old mess if I have to do something out on the road. Uh, we're not going to lose all our oil to, you know, having to pull the lines off. So that'll be that. And then we have, uh, you know, of course the, the lines run back. I put a bunch of these little keepers on there that uh, kind of keep the hoses in line where I want them to be. And that goes down there to the cooler, which is, as you can see, sort of, it's mounted uh, to the frame. And we'll sleep, we'll sneak over there. We'll get a picture of it. There we go. So I got my brackets holding it to the frame. We got our lines, you know, coming off of it. This one has, uh, right there, is the, it's the sensor for the temperature gauge that I got from ISP West. Um, and then these just run up past the fuel pump connection there. And that's it. So, I'm gonna arrange them so that they don't touch, but I need the motor in to do that. Ah, uh, because I have to still shorten the lines maybe just a little bit to, uh, Get those you know exactly where i need them i don't know where they're going to hit 
because on the motor itself, we got this, I have another uh, 90 degree fitting if I need it, but those lines should come up and 90 right into that. And then the other one goes back underneath in there to the connection. And then we'll put some more of that uh, spacesuit material over it so that the header doesn't burn it. Um, overall, it's looking pretty, pretty good, I think, for now. Uh, I gotta get that motor off the stand and get it plugged in. Uh, we also have to clearance the transmission, which I completely forgot about because it's a six volt tranny and a 12 volt flywheel. Uh, so I'm gonna have to get in there and do a little grinding and we have to change the starter. Kiki dropped off a an automatic starter for me. Uh, that's what you need when you switch over to 12 volt because um, it doesn't use the bushing, it's self-supporting. So uh, I gotta bolt in a new starter. We gotta clearance the transmission and we gotta bolt the motor in. We gotta hook up the oil lines. We gotta hook up the fuel lines. We gotta hook up the battery. Then hopefully we can give that thing a good start uh, right around dinner time, I think. <laughs> So no time to waste, let's get to work. Okay, grinding away <laughs> with my little carbide burr. I'm um, using the flywheel to check the clearance. And this is what you're looking for. Maybe you can't see it, I don't know. Yeah, there you go. So that flywheel made that mark in the freshly smoothed out uh, magnesium, aluminum, whatever, the transmission. Um, so that means that that's the high spot. It's actually not too bad. You gotta, I mean, you know you gotta take down where the bolts are. Don't go too thin. Uh, but we just got a little bit, tiny bit, tiny bit. Top looks good. So we're just gonna keep going. Be careful with that magnesium stuff. It's uh, super flammable if it gets too hot. So you wanna make sure, do a little bit at a time. Do not throw water on it if it starts to burn. Uh, water makes it worse, way worse. So I'm going to keep grinding and eventually this will be clear enough to put the motor in and then the motor will clear out the rest of what it needs. And uh, okay, here we go. good shot of what we had to take off or where we had to take it off from uh, it's pretty good it's a little still a little bit rubby but uh, when we put the motor in there it'll it'll find those last few high spots and it'll get them out there's a hundred different ways to do this you could ask a hundred old timers you know how they would do it and you'd probably get at least 75 different answers um, you put the motor in there and, and rotate it over. You can grind it off like this. You can just buy a 12 volt transmission. Uh, this is the way I learned it. This is the way I've always done it. And this is the way that seems to work, you know, pretty good for me. So this is how we did it. We just got this little, uh, it's a titanium tungsten carbide burr for uh, aluminum, uh, which is a softer metal. So this won't load up. If you get one for steel, it's going to get all melty and it's gonna load up in there. And you just kind of put the flywheel and, and turn it a little bit, take it out, see where the marks were and take off a little material and make sure you go all the way back, you know, because otherwise it may clear here, but it's gonna hit here when it's fully in there. So, you know, make sure you clear it all the way back to clear it. The only thing we're hitting now is the studs for the mount. Uh, I'm gonna have to probably get my grinder out and just, you know, give those a little kiss with the, the flapper wheel. Um, I rinsed this thing out really, really good. I rinsed off the ground really, really good. So I don't have any magnesium flakes, uh, just in case. We don't want a spark to hit one and uh, 
you know, make a fire and catch me on fire and I'll have a really bad day. So we're going to try to not do that. <laughs> but I've got, uh, everything's kind of damp in there and I'll hit it with the, the flapper wheel, not the cutoff wheel. Hopefully that'll make less uh, sparks. So let's uh, grab that grinder and we'll get to work. All right, now we got the transmission all cleared out. Put that flywheel in there. Beautiful, turns perfect. Uh, so we know we're not gonna have a problem putting the motor in. Should just slide right in nice and easy. Fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, now we gotta do, deal with the starter situation. So we had a six volt starter um, because this bus was six volt. We converted everything else to 12 volt, but uh, we kept the six volt starter uh, because they turn a little bit faster and you only hit them momentarily. I've never had one like overheat unless there was a problem with the motor and you just sit there cranking and cranking and cranking. Uh, so this thing is probably the original one. Um, still works, but doesn't work with a 12 volt flywheel. The number of teeth uh, are less. So what we need to do is replace it with a, a 12 volt starter. This is an automatic starter. Um, you see that little pokey deal that's poking up right there. That goes into the part of the bell housing and that supports the Bendix when it pops out or the, the gear, whatever that's called. Uh, the automatics don't have that, they're self-supporting. Uh, and this is necessary because the 12 volt little pin is a different size and you have to get a brass bushing and it's a total pain to knock the old one out and slide the new one in there. It super sucks. So this is the way to go. It's a little bit stronger starter and uh, it's self-supporting. Like I said, it doesn't have that little pin. So all we got to do is just bolt it in, wire up the wires. We're good to go. truth it's been like a month without driving my bus it's been uh it's been like three weeks two weeks of trying to get this motor put together and it's taken me almost a week just to get it in and buttoned up and, and get the oil lines and the fuel lines and the battery lines and the fuel pump relay and all that junk hooked up i've been having some problems with the oil filter blowing out i guess i was using the wrong filter uh you know don't trust the internet I got oil all over my driveway, I spilled like seven quarts of oil just trying to get the system primed, um, you know, get oil everywhere before even running the motor. Uh, nothing is tuned, I got it set to 10 degrees static and the carbs are just set to a base tune. Um, I cranked it a little bit, it seemed like it wanted to go, so let's give it a shot, the finale, see if we can get this thing to fire over and run. I got like a week before Big Ben, so it has to run today. <laughs> Let's go see if it runs.
are no leak. Fingers crossed. I do have a little leak coming from the cooler. Uh, one of the fittings, I think, where I put the the uh, sensor for the temperature, you know, cool temperature gauge or oil temperature gauge. Uh, I think it's leaking a little bit. I just need to get under there and and adjust that. But it doesn't look like it's leaking out of here so far. I need to uh, address the filter is touching the header. Uh, this is a much bigger filter. This filter is like coffee can. Uh, so I need to move that bracket a little bit away so it's not touching the header. I want to give it a you know, three-eighths or half inch of a gap. But that's it. The saga of the bus motor is, uh, we're going to call it done. <laughs> I need to adjust the carbs. I got to adjust the timing. Um, I got a couple other little tweaky fun things to do just to get it buttoned all back up. Um, we've got one more day, which is, uh, you know, we just have tomorrow and then Saturday we have the top notch and I would love to drive this thing down to top notch and give it you know a good shakedown I haven't driven it or anything in a month. I, I really miss driving the bus. The weather's so perfect. It's December. It's like 80 degrees in Texas uh, Man, I'm so excited <laughs> uh, So all right, well there you go. It runs uh, next time you see me we'll be driving at the top notch Again fingers crossed if this oil system holds up um, hit the link down below, get you a t-shirt from wherever we're selling t-shirts from these days. I have no idea where that is, but right down below you'll find it. Uh, subscribe, like, comment, share it, tell a friend, tell everybody. Uh, get you some magazines, volksamerica.com uh, or Barnes & Noble. Now we're available in Barnes & Noble bookstores, so get you some of that. And thanks for watching.